Hello and welcome to Algebra 1 Lesson 4. In this video we're going to learn about the multiplication property of equality. So in the last lesson we finally started talking about how to solve an equation. And we started talking about the first type of equations that we look at and those are linear equations in one variable. So let me kind of redefine that for you. So a linear equation in one variable looks like this. So it's ax plus b equals c. And again, your variable doesn't have to be x, but again, that's the most commonly used in algebra, so we kind of show that when we show a generic formula. Now, I also told you that a, b, and c could be any real number that you could think of. I had one exception to that. Your value for a, which is the coefficient of x, cannot be zero. So a cannot be zero because, again, if zero multiplies x, x is going to disappear, right? Zero times anything is always zero. So we can't have x dropping out because this is an equation and we need to have a variable. So other than that, again, a, b, and c can be anything that you want it to be. Now, specifically, in the last lesson, we looked at the case where a was 1, right? We had 1x plus b equals c. 1 times x, anything times 1 is just itself. So really, we saw x plus b equals c. So x plus some number equals some other number. So as an example, here we have x minus 9 equals negative 2. And I could rewrite this as x plus negative 9 equals negative 2. So x plus some number equals some number. So we learned how to solve an equation of this form. Basically, we do it in one step using something known as the addition property of equality. The addition property of equality tells us that we can add or also subtract the same number to, or in the case of subtraction from, both sides of an equation without changing the solution. And that's the key. As I go through the steps to solve an equation, I need my solution to stay the same. Because if I get a solution at the end and it doesn't work in the original equation, what use is it? So the key is I can add the same number, again, to both sides of the equation, and it doesn't change the solution. Now, the way we use that, our goal when solving an equation is to isolate the variable. In this case, that would be x. Now, if I look on the left side of the equation, I have this plus negative 9. I've got to think of a way to get rid of that, because I just want x by itself. I want x equals something so I can have a solution. Remember that if I add negative 9 and positive 9, I get 0. And if I had x plus 0, that would simplify to just x. So what I'm going to do is, on the left side, I'm going to add the opposite of negative 9, which again is positive 9. And because I do that to the left side, I must also do it to the right side. So I added 9 here, and I added 9 here. And now... On the left side, negative 9 plus 9 is 0. So I would have x plus 0, x plus 0, which simplifies to just x. On the right side, I'd have negative 2 plus 9, which is 7. And so I'd have x equals 7 as my solution. And if you want to, you can take a 7 and plug that in for x in the original equation and say 7 minus 9 equals negative 2. And that's true. The left side would simplify to negative 2 and the right side is negative 2. So the same value is on both sides of the equation, and so we know that this solution, x equals 7, is correct. Now suppose I give you something like 3x equals 9. How do we isolate x here? Again, this is our goal, to isolate x. Well now, you'll notice that I don't have anything that's being added to x. Now I have something that's multiplying x. So how do we isolate x in this case? Well, we need to think about a few different properties first, and then we're going to revisit this problem. So the first thing is that a number times its reciprocal is always 1. So we think about reciprocals when we think about fractions, right? If I have something like 2 fifths and I multiply by the reciprocal of 2 fifths, remember I take the denominator and I put it in the numerator, and I take the numerator and put it in the denominator. So a number like 2 fifths times its reciprocal, which is 5 halves, will always be 1. And why is that the case? Well, if I cross cancel, this 5 will cancel with this 5 and give me 1. This 2 will cancel with this 2 and give me 1. So I basically have 1 times 1, which equals 1. Now, this is always true. A number times this reciprocal is always 1. And you can see a kind of more advanced example of that. Let's say I had the number 
4. What is the reciprocal of 4? Remember, you could write 4 as 4 over 1. And then the reciprocal would be take 1 and put it in the numerator. Take 4 and put it in the denominator. And again, everything's going to cancel. This 4 is going to cancel with this 4. You really think of this 1 canceling with this 1. I mean, it's just going to be 1. So you have 1 times 1, which equals 1. So again, a number times its reciprocal is always 1. All right, another fact that you might want to think about is that a non-zero number divided by itself is also always 1. So for example, 10 divided by 10 equals 1. 1037 divided by 1037 is 1. Any non-zero number divided by itself is 1. You have to exclude 0 in that because you can't say 0 divided by 0 equals 1 because you can't divide by 0. Right? 0 can never be in the denominator. So that's why we say any non-zero number divided by itself is 1. So then there's one more thing I want you to note, and that's that if you multiply a number by 1, it remains unchanged. So it doesn't matter what it is. So 17 times 1 equals 17. Negative 15 times 1 equals negative 15. So x times 1 equals x. Or z squared times 1 equals z squared. Or if I wrote it a different way and put 1y, that's just equal to y, right? That's just equal to y. So a lot of times we'll see 1 as the coefficient of a variable, and we just write that variable without the 1, right? Because it's the same thing. All right, so now let's talk about the multiplication property of equality. So we can multiply or divide both sides of an equation by the same non-zero number, and that's important. Zero is not involved here and maintain the same solution. If you use zero to multiply, remember, if you multiply zero by something, it becomes zero. So zero is not gonna work for our multiplication property of equality. It has to be the same non-zero number. All right, so let's revisit our three x equals nine. So again, our goal is to isolate the variable x. So we wanna isolate this. And what can we do to get x by itself? Well, I have 3 multiplied by x equals 9. I want you to think back to what I just said a minute ago. A number divided by itself is 1. So if I divided, if I divided the left side here by the coefficient of x, which is 3, if I divided this by 3, and to make it legal, divided this by 3, what would happen over here is I would have 3 divided by 3, which is 1, and then 1 times x would just be x, right? This would be 1x equals 9 divided by 3 is 3. 1x equals 3 or x equals 3. So when you have a number, as we call it a coefficient, that, that is multiplying a variable in this format, all you need to do to isolate the variable is divide both sides of the equation by that number, right? By the coefficient of your variable. Another way you can think about this is I could think of 3 as 3 over 1. Let's say I had 3 over 1 times x equals 9. So if I have 3 over 1, again, a number times its reciprocal is always going to be 1. So I could have also said, okay, I'm going to multiply this side by the reciprocal of 3 over 1. The reciprocal of 3 over 1 is 1 over 3, or 1 third. And I'm going to multiply this by 1 third. And you can see that multiplying by a third and dividing by 3, that's the exact same thing. If I multiply by a fourth or I divide by four, that's the same. If I multiply by a fifth or I divide by five, that's the same. So what we get here is this three cancels with this three, and I'll basically have one times x or just x equals, this nine will cancel with this three and give me a three, three times one is three, so x equals three. And again, we always wanna check our solution. We might've made a mistake somewhere. So take the three and plug it back in for x. You'd have three times three, is equal to 9. And then over here on the left, 3 times 3 is 9, so you get 9 equals 9. Same value on the left as the right. So yeah, we can say that our solution here, x equals 3, is correct. All right, what about 2 thirds x equals 10? So the coefficient of x, what's multiplying x here is 2 thirds. So how do I isolate x in that scenario? Well, again, if I want to get x by itself, one thing I can do is I can multiply both sides by 3 halves. That's the reciprocal of 2 thirds. Remember, if I have 2 thirds and I multiply this by 3 halves, 
that's going to become 1. Now the only other thing over here is x, so times x. So this is going to cancel with this and give me 1. This is going to cancel with this and give me 1. So I'll have 1 times x or just x. Or you can write 1x if you want and then simplify that just to x. doesn't really matter. But over here I've got to make sure that because I multiplied by 3 halves, on the left side I do it to the right side. Otherwise you won't get the correct answer. So 10 times 3 halves. This 10 would cancel with the 2 and give me a 5. 5 times 3 is 15. So 1x equals 15. And again, this will simplify to x equals 15. So let's check this x equals 15 real quick. So I'm plugging a 15 in there. And I'd have 2 thirds times 15 equals 10. So this 15 would cancel with this 3 and give me a 5. 5 times 2 is 10. So I'd get 10 equals 10. Again, the same value on the left as the right. So x equals 15 is correct. So one thing I just want to bring your attention to, when you're in your textbook on this section about the multiplication property of equality, you basically have two different scenarios. You have a fractional coefficient for x, so like this one, 2 thirds times x equals 10. And I'm just writing this out like this just for us to be able to visually see what's going on. When you have a fractional coefficient, it's going to be faster for you to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of that fraction. If I wanted to, I could divide both sides by 2 thirds. I can divide both sides by the coefficient of x. I can always do that. So if I divide 2 thirds by 2 thirds, that's going to be what? 2 thirds divided by 2 thirds. The first fraction stays the same. The second fraction, we take the reciprocal. That's 3 halves. And we multiply. Remember, we, we did that before. We multiplied by 3 halves. So I'm kind of saving time because... This cancels, this cancels, right? This becomes 1. So we see that this would become 1, right? So you just have x on this side. Now, over here, 10 divided by 2 thirds. So 10 divided by 2 thirds. And remember, the way we do that is we write 10 as 10 over 1, and we multiply by the reciprocal of 2 thirds, which is 3 halves. Again, that's what I did. So this cancels with this and becomes 5. 5 times 3 is 15. So this simplifies to 15 over here. And we got that by just multiplying both sides by the reciprocal. So it was kind of like a faster way than doing the division, right? Because you got to go through and kind of set things up. So if you see a fractional coefficient for x, you want to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of that fractional coefficient. If you don't have that, if you have, for example, an integer coefficient, let's say it's negative 2. So let's say I have negative 2x equals 10, for example. Well, in this case, yeah, I can go through and multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of negative 2 is negative 1 half. I can do that. But really, it's kind of just faster just to divide in this scenario, right? So in this scenario, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. I would just say, okay, the coefficient of x is negative 2. So to get x by itself, I would divide both sides of the equation by negative 2. Because negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1. So I'd have 1 times x, or just x. Then 10 divided by negative 2 is negative 5. So in this case, the solution would be x equals negative 5. So again, if you have a fractional coefficient for your variable, you want to multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of that fraction. If you have an integer coefficient, you just want to divide both sides of the equation by that integer. All right, let's look at the next one. So we have negative 10x equals negative 60. So here's an example where we have an integer coefficient, right? We have negative 10, that's multiplying x. So to isolate my variable x, to isolate x, to isolate x, I would divide both sides of the equation by negative 10. So if I divide this side by negative 10 and this side by negative 10, this will cancel with this and give me 1. 1 times x is just x. Over here, negative 60 divided by negative 10 is just 6. And that's how quick I get my solution. Right, x equals 6. And if you check this, you just plug back in for x, plug a 6 in there, well, I'd have negative 10 times 6 equals negative 60. Of course, that's true. Negative times positive is negative. 10 times 6 is 60. So I get negative 60 equals negative 60. And so we can say this solution here, x equals 6, is correct. All right, what about negative 4x equals 20? So again, I have an integer coefficient for x. So if negative 4 is multiplying x, and I want x by itself, again, I want to isolate, I want to isolate my variable x, 
Well, I'm just going to divide both sides of the equation by negative 4, right? The coefficient of x. Really that simple because negative 4 divided by negative 4 is going to give me 1, right? 1 times x is just x. And i got to make sure I do it to this side, so then I have x is equal to 20 divided by negative 4 is negative 5. Plug negative 5 back in for x in the original equation. So you will have negative 4 times negative 5 equals 20. Negative times negative is positive. 4 times 5 is 20. So 20 equals 20. So yeah, this is the correct solution. x equals negative 5. All right, what about something like z over 8 equals negative 6? So the first thing is you got to realize if I have z over 8, I can think about it as z divided by 8. Or I could really think about this as 1 eighth times z equals negative 6. So if I think about it as 1 eighth times z, well, yeah, this is a fractional coefficient for z. Remember, we talked about the fact that if you had a fractional coefficient for your variable, when you go to think about isolating the variable, I would just multiply both sides by the reciprocal of that fractional coefficient. So the reciprocal of 1 eighth is 8 over 1 or just 8. So times 8 over 1 times 8 over 1. So this will cancel, and you'll just have z on the left side. On the right, negative 6 times 8 over 1 is the same as negative 6 times 8. That's negative 48. Now, another way to kind of think about this, and again, there's multiple ways to look at it. I have z divided by 8. So kind of to get z by itself, since it's divided by 8, I need to multiply by 8 kind of to undo the division. So you can think about it as multiplication, undoing division, division, undoing multiplication, right? You always want to do kind of the opposite operation. So since I have z and I'm dividing by 8, to undo that, I multiply by 8. And because I do it to this side, I must also do it to this side. So then this will cancel with this, right? 8 over 8 is just 1. 1 times z is just z. And negative 6 times 8, again, is negative 48. So kind of either way you think about that, you get z equals negative 48 as your solution. All right, so let's check our solution of z equals negative 48. So again, I'm just going to take negative 48, and I'm going to plug it in for z. So I would have negative 48 divided by 8 equals negative 6. And of course, we can already see that this is true. A negative divided by a positive is a negative. 48 divided by 8 is 6. So I'd have negative 6 is equal to negative 6. All right, let's take a look at one final problem. So we have x over 6 is equal to negative 13 over 6. So again, I can think about this in multiple ways. I can just say, okay, I have x divided by 6. So to undo the division, I can use multiplication. So x over 6 equals negative 13 over 6. Since I'm dividing x by 6, I can multiply by 6, right? 6 over 6 would be 1, right? Those would cancel. And I'd have 1 times x or just x on the left. But again, to make this legal, I've got to also multiply by 6 on the right side. And then 6 would cancel with 6 here and give me 1. 1 times negative 13 is negative 13. So x equals negative 13 is the solution. Now, another way you could have thought about this, if I see a variable over a number, remember, I can break that up and say, okay, well, this is the same as if I had 1 6 times x equals negative 13 over 6. For some students, that'll make it mentally easier for you to see, okay, well, I have this times this, so I know that I can multiply both sides by the reciprocal if I have a fractional coefficient for x. So I can multiply both sides by 6 over 1. And multiplying by 6 over 1 is the same thing as what we did earlier when we multiplied by 6, right? It's the same thing. It's just this might be mentally easier for you to remember. So then this will cancel with this and give me a 1. So 1 times x is just x. And then over here, this will cancel with this and give me 1. 1 times negative 13 is negative 13. So again, either way you do it, you're going to get that x equals negative 13. And when we check this problem, if I plug a negative 13 up here, well, look how easy it is to see. I would have negative 13 over 6. Right again, I just plugged this in for x equals negative 13 over 6. Yeah, same value on the left and the right. So our solution here, x equals negative 13, is of course correct.